Paolo used to, and he is going to talk to us about uh, the geomorphism of the torus with protection sets half non empty field. Thank you very much. Um, I also would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. And I'll try to use the projection uh, in the beginning, and then I will write something, OK? So I'm going to speak about the dynamics of diffeomorphisms of the torus, for which you can define a rotation set. Uh, it turns out that there are only two homotopy classes, OK? two types of homotopy classes for which this works. So let me start with some basic definitions. <coughs> for me, the torus is always the, the flat torus, OK? And P is the covering projection. And, and P1 and P2 are the projections on the axis, x axis and y axis. And coordinates are denoted as written, uh, x and y in the torus, x tilde and y tilde in the plane, okay? So just to, to remind, to keep some little definitions in mind, uh, P of one point in the plane is just okay, and this is the torque. So to which classes this study applies? Uh, of course, you could work in the C0 setting, but uh, my results need some, some differentiability. So this D1 plus epsilon 0 is the set of C1 plus epsilon, diffeomorphism of the torus homotopic to the identity, and D1 plus epsilon k, the set of C1 plus epsilon, diffeomorphism of the torus homotopic to this then twist, OK? And uh, th this just means that, well, given the epsilon and some non-zero integer, you can define these two classes. And this is just what I said. So every time we say f belongs to one of these two classes, we just mean that oh, for some epsilon and some k non-zero, this happens. And also, given one of a map f in the, from the torus, a diffeomorphism of the torus to belonging to each to one of these classes. It's lived to the plane, which is the universal cover of the torus. It's just denoted with a tilde and fixed some map f. Any two such lifts, they just differ by an integer vector. So uh, I just want to write the two cases here. So when you are homotopic to the identity, a lift is written in this way. And these are periodic. One periodic, for instance, and and when you're homotopic to a dent twist, the lift is like this. These are also periodic. OK? So now we want to define what is a rotation set, what is a rotation vector. First, what is a rotation vector for these maps? So in the homotopic to the identity case, a rotation vector is just the natural generalization of rotation number for in the case of the circle. So uh, you just 
say, some point in the torus has rotation vector rho of z if it's equal to the limit, which is simply the, the generalization of what happens in, in, in the circle. Okay? So this is, uh, of course, this limit may not exist for all points. Actually, when the rotation set has interior, I'm going to speak about that in a minute, but uh, there are points which, in a certain sense, realize any compact subset of the interior. So what is a rotation set? Well, this definition is not very transparent. Okay? It's what it is, but you can prove that it's actually, that definition is actually equal to, to this which is also not very transparent, but more than that, I think. It's the set of omegas in the plane such that uh, there are sequences. Zi in the plane. And I go into infinity such that uh, closure of this. So you, it's not very difficult to prove. It's easy uh, to prove that that definition coincides with this one. And this one is clearly related to, to invariant measures, OK? But let's just let me state two properties of the rotation set, which are very important for what I'm going to explain later. Uh, first, it's a compact convex subset of R2. Okay, so uh, either you have a point, a segment, or something with interior. And if the interior is not empty, then all the interior points of the rotation set are realized by compact invariant subsets. What this means? It means the following. So if your rotation set has interior, okay, suppose you have something like this and you pick any point in the interior, then in the torus, there is this compact invariant set. OK? There's this compact invariant set, uh, such that the rotation vector exists at all points of the set and is equal to omega. And I'm sorry? No, no, no. Only, only for my theorems I, I need the differentiability. That's a good point. I should have explained this earlier. This is a C0 result. And uh, moreover, if, if omega is, for instance, one third, two thirds, then you can find a periodic orbit with period free. OK? So uh, you can find, a, if omega is a rational vector, then you can find periodic orbits which realize this vector but no, not only realized, but with the smallest possible period. Okay, so this result uh, is a combination of two results from Miserevitz, Zeeman, and, and Franks. And another one, which I actually do not need, but uh, anyway, if you pick some point in the boundary of the rotation set, which is a, an extreme point, this means that it's not a convex combination of two points in the rotation set, then if it's a rational vector, it's also realized by a periodic arc. So this is well known, OK? And uh, I would like to explain uh, what kind of rotation theory you can develop in the dentwist case. In the dentwist case, if you, if you try to do the same as you do in the homotopic to the identity case, you, you Rapidly, you, you see that it doesn't make sense because, because of this, OK? Because of this k, which is non-zero. So, so you, you, it doesn't make sense. This is not well defined. If you, if you try to 
to compute this. It depends on which Z tilde you, you choose that projects onto Z. And moreover, the first coordinate has no meaning because either it's, uh, either the second is, okay, the first coordinate is infinity for lots of points. So you just have to, to if you think a little bit, it's easy to see that the, the, the correct invariant is, is this vertical rotation number which is simply the projection of the, what, what should be the, the rotation vector in the second coordinate. And of course, it may not exist as before. And the vertical rotation set, which is now a subset of R, okay, is, so here you have to take the projection on the second coordinate. This is why everything works. And this is just a, a copy of the previous definition, but you have to take the projection on the second coordinate. And you can prove that uh, this is always a closed interval. Okay, so it's the same thing. It's compact and, connect and convex, so in the line, it's got to be a closed interval. Of course, it can be a single point. And all its interior points are realized by compact invariant subsets in the same way, and rational points are realized by periodic orbits. So I proved this in my PhD thesis in 2000, and after that, I discovered that a student of Frank's Doef had already proved it. Anyway, so let me just give you some examples to show that having a rotation set with interior is not something very difficult to obtain. In the homotopic to the identity class, you can look at this, it's actually a one parameter family, and, and uh, it's not difficult to prove that if alpha is larger than one, your rotation set contains this, this square. And why is that? Because of the previous theorems. Because uh, the rotation set is compact and convex, and it's not difficult to prove that this map has for fixed points whose rotation vectors are exactly 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, okay? So you, you have the vertices of the square, and then as it's convex, you have the whole square inside the rotation set, okay? And in the, in the dent twist case, I guess the, one of the <laughs> most important maps in two-dimensional dynamics, conservative maps in two-dimensional dynamics is the standard map, which is very easily written, and that's all about it, that, that is easy. <laughs> and you can prove in the same way that if this parameter alpha is larger than one, then the rotation, the vertical rotation set contains this interval. So let me talk about the, the results, okay? Uh, uh, the results hold for in the homotopic to the identity class and in the dent twist class. I'm, I'm going to state them only in the homotopic to the identity be because of two things. First, the, the statement is analogous. You, you can, if you look at one, you immediately will guess how to change it for the dent twist case. And the proofs are, are very similar in both situations. So theorem one says the following. This is, uh, I want to make a picture of it. So if you have a, a diffeomorphism of the torus, C1 plus epsilon, for which the, the rotation set has interior and zero is in the interior of the rotation set for some fixed lift. Uh, it turns out that you must have a, a hyperbolic periodic saddle. F tilde periodic means just that uh, you have a hyperbolic saddle in the torus whose rotation vector is zero, okay? So it's periodic in the, in the universal cover. And this saddle has 
this particular property. If you look at one point, no, I don't need uh, conservative for this result. So, and you, you take all integer translates of this point. It's something very hard to draw. Okay? Uh, of course, as F tilde is a lift of, of this torus map homotopic to the identity. All the translates of Kitilda are uh, hyperbolic saddles in, in the plane and with the same period and everything. And you have this property. The unstable manifold of Kitilda intersects the stable manifold in a topologically transverse way. I don't know if this has a, a, a C1 crossing, but it's a topological crossing, at least. Okay. No, because I, I have to increase the, the period and I can get hyperbolic. This comes from the use of pacing theory with some sets with positive topological entropy. That's why I need C1 plus epsilon. Okay? I, uh, of course, you, uh, you, you, I'm not saying that you have a fixed point, which is, which is a saddle. But if you increase the period a lot, then you can have hyperbolic sense. And this is... Uh, uh, a very weird thing, the first time I noticed it. Oh, actually, let me just say another thing. Uh, the converse of this result is also true, okay? So if you have all the, the intersection, you don't even need all. You just need, for instance, with one zero, minus one zero, zero one, zero minus one, then the rotation set must have interior. Because you just have to, to, to do some symbolic dynamics with these horseshoes, and then you can get points with, with uh, rotation vectors such that zero is the, in the interior of the convex hole of these rotation vectors. So uh, having such a thing, is, uh, such intersections, is equivalent to having zero as an interior point. Okay? So, well, I, there are many questions about this, and maybe if I have time, I'll just point one that I don't know if it's relevant, but it's very interesting for me. Let me just try to explain. Uh, this is a technical result, this theorem 2. But uh, maybe I'll try to. Uh, all right, let me just read this and, and I'll draw the picture. OK. So this theorem is about some bounded displacement. OK. And let me tell you what this means. So. Suppose you have some map in this class, okay, C1 plus epsilon, and a fixed lift, uh, and, and your map has the property that the rotation hat set has interior. Then, what I want to do? So this is the rotation set, it has interior. Then you pick some point in the boundary, okay? As, as the, the rotation set is compact and convex, you have a supporting line at this point. What's the property this line has? Just that uh, rho of f tilde does not intersect uh, one of the connected components of the complement of the line. In this case, it's this one, you know, called this omega 2, omega 1. So rho of f tilde is contained in omega 1 plus omega 1 plus uh, r. Uh, so what else? You, you take the, a perpendicular vector to at this point, pointing towards the, the, this, the side of R, which does not intersect the rotation set. It's exactly this picture. Okay. 
And what can I prove? I can prove that if you, if you look at the displacement, OK, you just iterate the point, and, and you compare with n times omega. And you project, this is just the, the um, scalar product with v, v orthogonal. V is just a v is here. So that's why I, I wrote v orthogonal. Uh, and it's bounded from above. Okay, there is this constant, which depends only on omega, such that for any point in the plane, you can iterate it as much as you want. You subtract the point, and then you subtract the, the n times omega, and it's always bounded from above. Clearly, it's not bounded from below, because as the rotation set is here, for instance, suppose 0 is here. Okay? And as 0 is here, uh, uh, you have a, a fixed point. So this first part is 0. Okay? So 0 minus n omega scalar to, to v it goes to minus infinity. So it cannot be bounded in the other direction. This is what you, this is the best you could hope for. Okay? So this is a technical result, but it implies uh, uh, something that is in my mind for about, I don't know, nine years. <laughs> uh, since I read a paper from Richard Sharp where he said he proved this thing, and uh, after a while, I read another paper and said that his proof was wrong, and it was in my mind since then. And 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 with that last theorem, I can prove this thing. Well, if you. For, uh, let me draw a picture, uh, an easier picture, okay? Suppose the, the, suppose the rotation set is, for instance, like this, and you are considering this point, which is 0, 1, okay? So you have this line, okay? And, and what you can prove is that uh, if you look, for instance, at, for the second coordinate, This is the line R. So you, you cannot go too far away from the, the, what you should be projected in the direction orthogonal to, to the supporting line. Okay? It's, it's uh, some sort of bounded displacement condition, but you have to, to project everything in the direction of the orthogonal to the supporting line. So the, this next result says that, well, if you have a, a diffeomorphism of the torus, homotopic to the identity, and suppose it preserves area, and the rotation set has interior. Then the rotation vector of the Lebesgue measure must be in the interior of the rotation set. So, uh, if you have a family like like the one I, I wrote before, I can go back. For instance, like this, uh, this family it's not very easy to see things looking at just at this, but you can uh, actually this this map came from a composition of two maps. One fixes the vertical lines, and the other fixes the horizontal lines. And both, it's easy to prove that both preserve Lebesgue measure. So this map preserves Lebesgue measure. So what you can prove is that for any alpha, the, the rotation vector of Lebesgue measure, uh, which in this case is 0, okay, it's always in the interior of the rotation set. But, uh, and this was a conjecture by Philip Boyle. Well, he said, if you have a, a rotationless homeomorphism of the torus, what, what means rotationless? It means that the rotation vector of Lebesgue measure is zero. Or you could think in the, in the lift. In the lift, this condition is easy to, to write, OK? Uh, if you, you are in R2, so you have this square, and you take the image of this square under F tilde. It's something like this. 
and, and if the, this integral if this integral is zero, uh, this means that the, the the geometric center of S coincides with the geometric center of F of S. So the, his, his conjecture was, if you had such mapping uh, for which the rotation vector of Lebesgue measure is zero, then if the rotation set has interior, zero must be an interior point. So uh, the, the corollary I've just stated says that this is the case no matter uh, what's the value of the rotation vector of Lebesgue measure. It can be rational, irrational, but anyway, it's always in the interior of the rotation set. Okay? So, uh, from now, every time, uh, uh, in all results I will state. Uh, the, the, conjecture so we keep in mind? the conjecture is yeah. uh, the, the one I proved or his original? No, okay. <laughs> Uh huh. Okay. Uh, of course, his conjecture was for homeomorphisms of the torus. Okay. So uh, it, in this case, as far as I know, it's it's still open. Uh, so. Uh, F is homeomorphism of T2. F is homeomorphism of T2. Preserves area and the rotation vector of Lebesgue, which is equal to F is a homeomorphism of the torrent of the engineer, preserves area, and then if. Actually, I, I remember that uh, my, my friend and colleague, Fabio Tal, uh, there were some cases missing in his proof, but I guess he managed them. So Boylan's conjecture, I guess he, he proved it completely. Uh, but but uh, what, what I proved is that it doesn't matter which value the, the rotation vector of Lebesgue measure takes. It's still, it must be still in, in the interior of the rotation set. So, so I'm sorry? So you say it's always uh, is not in the boundary. Not in the boundary, yes. It's always in, uh, when you have interior, right? If there's no interior, what uh, Well, you may have a point, and <laughs> it's that point. And you, if you have a segment, uh, if it's a rational segment, it can be in the interior of the segment. 
and if a rational, I mean uh, with rational slope containing rational points. And well, there, there is this conjecture about w what kind of segments can be realized for biomeomorphism. So uh, the ones which I know that can be are the ones which, for which you have uh, uh, one extreme is rational, is rational point, and the slope is irrational. Okay? And, and for this case, uh, the examples I know, the rotation vector, if they preserve the bag measure, the rotation vector of the bag measure is always in the boundary. Okay, but I don't know if it can be in the interior. Uh, so, from now on, I assume that F has um, preserves the bag measure. This is just a, a simple definition, but uh, I don't know why I wrote that. Uh, what is a disk? Everyone knows what is a disk. So. It's a connected, simply connected, open subset of the tars. That's it. It's just like uh, in the following I say, oh, it uh, has bounded diameter. So how, how do I measure the diameter of a disk in the tars? The, when you, 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 you look at the pre-image under the covering projection in the plane, uh, what you see? You see a disjoint union of translates of the same thing, which is morally your disk. So I say that the diameter of D is small, is, is bounded by one, if diameter of D tilde in the torus is, is, in the plane, sorry, is bounded by one. Okay? So, so this theorem, ma many results I'm going to say, they, they have a, uh, they share uh, the same, uh, how do I say, spirit of results due to Andrea Koropecki and Fabio Tau in the C0 setting. It's just that I, I, with the stronger hypothesis, in some places I got some stronger results and uh, another explanation of the same phenomenon. So uh, this theorem three talks about uh, periodic open disks in the torus. How, how, how can they be? So if the, the rotation set has interior and your map is transitive, then you cannot have a periodic open disk. This is not as, as obvious as it seems because uh, you could have a, a, an unbounded open disk, okay? A disk in the torus such that when you lift it to the plane, it has unbounded diameter. So, so uh, this is the point. Uh, of course, if the diameter is bounded, then you cannot have a periodic open disk because you're assuming transitivity. But uh, if you are not, sorry, but uh, the diameter could be unbounded in, in principle. But it cannot. So the, the second statement in this theorem says that in the general case, all periodic open disks have this uniform bound in the diameter from above. Okay? So, and this is not difficult to obtain. Uh, maybe if I have time, I can go back to this. Using, using the first theorem, which says that, oh, you have all that uh, heteroclinic intersections in the plane. So uh, after you prove theorem one, this is more or less a, cor a corollary, okay? So every time you have a, an open disk which is periodic in the torus, uh, its diameter is bounded by this constant, and you can even uh, compute this constant, try to compute. So I'm trying to describe what happens in, so, so the, the main motivation for all this was to describe what happens in the lift when you have a diffeomorphism of the torus whose rotation set has interior. So I'm, I'm trying to prove results about the lift to the plane. Okay, so this is uh, in this spirit. And, well, let's skip the, the... Suppose P over Q, R over Q is zero, okay? This is just some... I shouldn't have written for general vector. And, and what, what you can prove is, is this. So if zero is in the interior of the rotation set, okay, and F, the torus map, is transitive, then, of course, uh, a zero is in there, and the bag the bag is preserved, 
f is transitive, and f is transitive, then, well, that you have this. And which point is this k tilde? It's, it's that point from the first theorem, which is a periodic shadow in the, in the, in the plane, oops, for which its unstable manifold intersects the stable manifold of all its translates. Okay, so uh, you, you, you do not only have this intersection, but you intersect all translates and the closure of the, the invariant manifolds. Actually, you just have to take one leaf. There's one leaf such that it's dense in the plane. Okay, so there's one leaf which intersects the stable manifolds of all the translates. And in particular, uh, what I said, if, if the rational vector is zero, then your map in the plane is topologically mixing. Okay, because uh, if you have a dense, if you, dense stable manifold of a periodic point in the plane and the stable manifold are dense, it's, what is topologically mixing? Huh? In a certain sense, topologically mixing, I don't know if it's equivalent, but I think it is. It's uh, like all iterates are transitive in the plane. So, there exists a number which depends on them. So given two open sets, there exists a number such that uh, uh, <coughs> iterates of u intersect v for all n larger than this number. I'm sorry? Yeah. Is it for this topological the, the previous? Yeah. <laughs> no, for, for any uh, rational point in the interior of the rotation set, you have a hyperbolic saddle which realizes this rotation vector and has all that intersection. Yes. I can, yes, I, I will state in a minute. So let me just state, so this, this is, of course, when you assume that your map is transitive. But uh, I guess, uh, uh, and, and Fabio Tau and Andre Koropecki, they proved that when zero, if you have a area preserving homeomorphism of the torus, for which uh, zero is in the interior of the rotation set, then if you are transitive in the torus, you are transitive in the plane. And, and their proof is C0 uses very different techniques. So uh, when I discovered this, I, I was very happy because, you know, when two different theories give the same kind of results, it means that probably it's, they are correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, uh, so, so in the general case, what, what happens in the general case? If, if you, our map is not transitive, then what, what can you say? So suppose zero is in the interior of the, the rotation set, then you have this, this point, okay, uh, for which the, the unstable manifold intersects the stable manifold of all translates. You, this is given in theorem one, the first result. And, and what can you say about it? What more can you say now that you assume that you preserve area? Oh, you, you can say these things. So 
the, the, the closure of the unstable manifold is equal to the closure of the stable manifold. They are f tilde invariant. Okay, this is not immediately obvious because because the period of k tilde might not be one. So in principle, we, they, these sets were just uh, invariant by some iterate, but you, it's not hard to prove that they are invariant under f tilde, and they are also invariant under integer translations. So uh, this follows from these intersections. Okay. If, if this thing accumulates on one point, then this thing must accumulate on the same point. So they're invariant under integer translations. And what about the, the complement of this, of, this, of this set? Well, if you pick a connected component of the complement and you project it to the, to the torus, uh, as you preserve area, th this must be a periodic open disk in the torus. And so its diameter is bounded from above by that constant. So the picture is, is this, okay? You have this point k tilde, and then you, you project it to the torus. You have the p of k tilde. And then the, the unstable manifold. And they, they accumulate on a set which contains simple closed curves in all homotopy classes, and the complement is a union of uh, open disks whose diameter is have uh, uniformly bounded from above. So it's, it's like uh, something like this. Something like this. So this is what? This is the unstable manifold of this point, the closure. Okay, and 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 because of the first property that this set is invariant under integer translations, uh, the unstable manifold of k tilde, for instance, is equal to p minus one of this set, which I I call region of instability of the map F. Because when when people in physics we're studying this kind of maps. They use it to think, well, if, if you make a computer experiment, just look at orbits of points, what you see? If you, uh, I had some nice pictures. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't find them. And actually, I found them, but I forgot them at home. So, <laughs> uh, and uh, I actually have a, a, an executable uh, software. So you, you have the torus, and you can click at a point, and you just draw on the orbit. And, and it's very nice because you see some points are in this elliptic island, so you, you, they have a, their orbit is just a homotopically trivial uh, simple closed curve. And other points, when you iterate them, they just fill the whole torus minus what? Minus some, some of these holes, OK? So these points are, are uh, these, these, well, led the people in physics to call this a region of instability, where they assume that lots of things hold. And, and uh, as far as I know, any of them have been pro already proven. So, so let me just state the last result. So as I said, this uh, in this, the following definition, region of instability. And, and uh, let me explain this term in words instead of Just reading that, okay? So, uh, with a picture. So, assume your rotation set is is like this, and pick, for instance, three. Uh, I don't know, doesn't matter. So, zero is in the interior, okay? So, pick any any other row one, which is a rational vector. So you know that there exists a point. Let me write in this way, which is hyperbolic saddle, uh, such that the rotation vector of this point is exactly rho 1. And if you lift it to the plane. I'm just saying that 
the, I'm just applying the first result to this point, okay? So uh, if you pick any rational in the interior of the rotation set, you have a point in the torus, okay? You have this point in the torus, which is a hyperbolic saddle. And if you uh, lift it to the plane, okay, uh, then what you know? You know that the unstable manifold of this point, the unstable manifold of this point, intersects in a topologically transverse way the stable manifold of any translate. This is just the first theorem. Okay, uh, and what? And this result says what? Says that the, the says what? Actually, you can prove that. This is just uh, one of the theorems, but you can prove that the, the closure is always the same. Okay? The closure is the same in the torus and the same in the plane. So you, for, each, for each rational vector in the interior of the rotation set, you can, uh, you, you know, you have this hyperbolic saddle which realize that rotation vector and has all the heteroclinic intersections in the plane. And uh, these stable manifolds and unstable manifolds ha all have the same closure, okay? So the region of stability is the same whether you choose a point with zero rotation vector or the specific point with the other. And they all intersect. So uh, this point, And if you pick, for instance, uh, okay, zero is here, and you have row two here, and you pick the, the point corresponding to row two, you have these intersections. So the unstable manifold, so they are all homoclinically related, okay? <laughs> because uh, I'm not saying that for all hyperbolic periodic points this happens. I'm saying that for each rotation vector, there is one hyperbolic. Uh, saddle which realized that rotation vector for which this happens, but you may have other. Homoclinic class is the, the closure of the uh, topologically transverse homoclinic intersection. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, I guess, a very possible problem. So that was uh, you could have some stable manifolds and unstable manifolds very close to each other and not they intersecting. Yeah. I can tell you something about the rotation. Well, it's not that good because I, I, I don't remain in the, in the region of instability. But uh, if you pick any point in the region of instability, so the region of instability is, is this set. So you pick any point here, OK? You pick any point here. and an arbitrarily small ball here. And so as you know that it's the closure of the unstable manifold and stable manifold of uh, periodic points with all rotation vectors, you know that inside this ball you have points in the stable manifold of any 
saddle with any prescribed rotation vector. So given an arbitrarily small ball, you have points here with all possible, all possible rational rotation vectors inside this ball. Because you just have to pick points in the stable manifold of the adequate point. But uh, I thought about this for a while. And the obstruction is, uh, I spoke about this in Portugal, and Pedro Duarte told me, oh, uh, at least in the, when you assume transitivity in the torus, maybe you could prove that uh, homoclinic points are dense. And he said, I have an idea. <laughs> and I couldn't do, and I asked him by email which was his idea, and he never <laughs> answered. So maybe, I don't know. <laughs> maybe he actually had one, but uh, the problem is that you, you, you may have a lot of uh, small rectangles where the, the manifolds are so close and don't intersect. So let me just say w which is the, the further development. Uh, I'm trying to, together with Andre de Carvalho, we are generalizing these results for surfaces of higher genus. W which results? Well, uh, Mostly theorem one implies everything, but uh, we 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 had some we need some extra hypothesis because uh, in higher genus you can define a, a rotation set with the homology, but it's not true that if it has interior all interior points are realized. You need some extra hypothesis. There are some examples where you, uh, the extra hypothesis, namely you you you've got to find, for instance, some some points. Uh, let me say, if you are in the, in the two torus, okay, the torus with genus 2, uh, the, the homology is R4, and uh, we, we are assuming in this particular situation that there, are, uh, there is a simplex and, and its vertices are points which really exist, are points which are realized by some periodic points. And then, uh, you can prove most of these things. And, and <laughs> as, as you asked, and I said I have no idea, the questions are, is F restricted to the region of instability transitive? Does it have a dense set of periodic points, formal clinic points? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>